Welcome to Sunny Irabo Live. Yes, good afternoon everyone again and uh, welcome to the show. It's Sunny Rabo Live and today we are going live with some two very powerful Nollywood professionals. But we said gurus, whatever we call them, they are part and parcel of the evolution of Nollywood. One of them is, of course, Charles Novia and the other is Shegun Arinze. Charles Novia is already with me because we're talking to him by phone and Shagun, we're waiting for him. He's going to join us in the studio. So, Charles Novia, how are you? I'm fine, Uncle Tony. Good afternoon. Good, Good afternoon. afternoon. I like all the, all the listeners, actually. I'm used to TV, so I'm saying viewers. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you can't be too far from me, too, because even people on Instagram and everybody, they're listening to you. I hope they can okay. hear you loud and clear. We will yeah. continue to perfect the act. And uh, so, well, Charles Novia is the CEO of, a <coughs> sorry, Novia Productions, is it correct? November Productions. November. <laughs> Why did you choose November? Well, it's quite a special month. It's my best month. Uh, uh, my daughter got, she was also uh, born in November. And then uh, the year begins for me in November. So in November, I say Happy New Year to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And we that I, well, I wasn't born in September. But I know there is a song that said, try to remember the month <laughs> of September, right? Yes. And now you are saying November. Da, 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 da. Okay. Mine, I was born in March. So, yeah. And then you are also the CEO of TV, Children's TV. Teen, teen Africa Television is a channel for teenagers. Um, teen. Aha. Uh -huh. yes. Teen Africa Television. You know, yeah. when I play these games, I just want you to say it by yourself. Say you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. right. Teen Africa Television. On what channel? Um, we're on Star Times on um, channel Star Time. 361 and but We are now porting to DSTV in a few weeks. So we'll make the announcement okay. um, in a few days too as well. But okay. it's the first channel for teenagers in Africa. It's a new channel. We're not a children's channel. Like it's happening on that. So we are basically the, the teen market, the teen audience, the uh -huh. teen, different demographics. So um, we, we, are, we, are, we are broadcasting for the teen and family, just like Inspiration is a family cha uh, family um, radio station. Radio station, now, yes. Teen and family uh, station. But for the young the, the young adults, the, what I call the kid dot, we call the transition from children, from um, being kids to adults. So we call them kid dot who. So we are for the teens, as it were. Hmm. Okay. Now, um, our business here is Nollywood. Yeah. And uh, I have read a lot of articles by you about Nollywood, the evolution. I will use my own word, but, uh, the, the metamorphosis, the struggles, and everything. And I think what came to a head was uh, during Jonathan's time, when for the first time there was really a government attention paid to it. But before then, let's take our steps back many years to you when did Nollywood really start to you okay so we will have to differentiate between Nollywood the the term the prefix that we've given it the name okay. uh, we've known that and then um, the industry itself the Nigerian television um, movie industry as it were film industry okay, uh, um, okay. so if I, if, if I always say this that I think um, we have to go back to the colonial time because we have to um, Nollywood as it's right today predict um, independence um, when we had the first um, movie the first well I call it the first Nigerian movie I think that was in around 1925 or there about that with the one with Orlando, Orlando Martins yeah okay. back in the day so but those okay. things were things that poured 
um, the imagination of a whole lot of a new gener a generation of filmmakers back then, the the Polisho um, the Jabba Jews, and all wow. that came at the tail, uh, you know, at the beginning of our independence and started producing films. Uh, Pongi's Hardness, um, a few of all the other things that came out then. Mm -hmm. But Nollywood itself, the the Nollywood we know today, is mm -hmm. an offshoot of the television industry. So as television was um, very much part of our staple entertainment uh, diet in the 60s and 70s and 80s, Nollywood came like a freak accident. Uh, you know, a creative freak accident, as I say, in the 90s, where um, it's, been at, at, it's been attributed to uh, uh, Mr. Kenneth Nebwe with Living in Bondage, the original Living in Bondage that was uh, mm -hmm. written in the um, And that was because um, back in the day, the exporters and importers in quote of uh, blank VHS tapes. Um, you know, I remember when I was actually, you know, in, in university and other going off back in the day, we used to watch a lot of foreign movies on, on uh, VHS. You know, VHS, you know, where, where, where we are taped where the renamed uh, media of them. If you had the video, if you had the VHS player, a video player in your, in your house, you were considered a rich person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a growing demand for um, foreign films and all that, but this uh, ingen ingenious. Uh, Gentleman Kenneth Mayboy saw a gap there and decided to do a movie, produce a movie, Living in Bondage, and uh, that was what sparked off um, the rest of the what we know as modern Hollywood. Because that the success of that movie, Living in Bondage, um, sort of opened the eyes of a whole lot of other creatives and uh, production of local home videos, which we used to call it back then. Mm. Because home so video. The formal term Nollywood was uh, people do some research was given to us by. A reporter from, um, uh, I think, Washington Post in 1991, uh, 2001, when he did an article where he, he actually, I saw him when he came to Nigeria back then, too, as well. I, I think he was interviewing people around the Winnie's and the Ecowas Hotel, and um, uh, he went back and he wrote, Step Aside Bombay, Step Aside Hollywood, Year Come. I think I remember Hollywood. that. Yes. And, yes, and that's how the name stuck. And then, well, it wasn't a name people would say, but we took it, and then the world knows, knows you know, the world right now, they, they know us as uh, Nollywood. Even if you put on your Netflix, Netflix right now, it's Nollywood. It. Yeah, so it's, it's a name. So that is how, that's a brief history of Nollywood, as, as um, I would like to. In so fact, what, yeah. you know what you've done? You just actually made it so easy and acceptable for anyone who wanted to understand how it all came about. And But I want to take you again back to. You, <laughs> you, the Niger, the Afri was it called African movies that time or Nigerian movies from the days of um, Ambrose Campbell, uh, Orlando Martins, you know, then we now moved, to, we started graduating to the 40s, 50s, 60s, and they started to make sense to you and I, yeah. I do not think they were called. Uh, they, they had any definition. I think film was film back in the day. Back in the day, just film. have to watch film. Uh, yes. When I think the conscious, the term Nigerian film became very uh, uh, prominent. That phrase um, in the nineties. Uh, mm. Before then, there was really no film industry. It was television. We were all watching television, and then we were watching right. television. So there right. was really nothing. But uh, but so, even when we started with home videos in the, in the 90s we were all calling it home videos up to 2001 2002 it was still nigerian <laughs> home videos that's what we were calling that was the phrase we were all using actually uh, yeah because uh, we were actually depending on them um, videos yeah you know yeah, definitely we and, were. and um i think too what nollywood maybe we'll get to that in the course of this question but i think yeah. what nollywood has done in the course of of um these nomenclature reviews is we were able to also bring a sort of creative spirit. Like, when, I remember when we started back in the days, um, we would write scripts, and some of the scripts, of course, some of the um, requirements, some of the production values are quite um, mm -hmm. high, you know, and we couldn't achieve them. So we would say, well, what we used to say is that, oh, you both did one and not get 10 hex now. We said, go to one. So we, it was more or less like. So it was the spirit of, of determination, it. right? Yeah. But yeah. one of the things that I thought about when I was thinking of how to promote this was that the idea was birthed by people who were hungry, right. figuratively speaking, 
because right. they, they, they knew they could do something but they didn't know how to go about doing it and they didn't know who was going to show any interest anyway you yeah. know so they just went okay let's take it up let's take the bull by the horn let's just do it yes we can do it and that's what we used to do back in the day from the 90s you know up to, from up to now but we say let's do it let's do it and at that time one of the most striking things at that time was that we didn't realize we were creating history we didn't realize we were being watched beyond the shores of nigeria we were mm. just films and we thought it was for the home market so we were, con- we were just treating for ourselves and they were watching us so it was a big shock in 2003, I think, or 2004, when some of us, uh, when the half of the industry, I put it in quotes, half of the stars and producers in the industry traveled to the U.S. in 2004. <laughs> that and they were, they were instant stars. Yes, and they were saw in the diaspora, and many people were running up in the, the African industry, were running out to, 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 to hail the stars, to shout, and so on. We all came back with a different notion after that trip that, look, it is not child play anymore. People are watching, and that that sort of um, that trans, you know transcended our ambitions. Now our ambitions became okay. Now we gotta start having a little bit more on quality uh, than what we used to do before when we felt that there was no money. So a lot of things changed, and then we got, we got to pump more money into the project a little bit from that time on. But before then, it was it was just like okay, let's do it, let's just do it. We know we are telling the stories and all that, but we thought it was we thought it was just insular for the local market. You know, mm. uh, yeah. Okay. Now, I, I I must thank you for this because there's a lot of exposure and exposition going out here. Um, when did it become real business? But before you answer that, let me give you an um, an encounter I had in Kampala, Uganda. This was in 2006. Um, right. There was the conference. About 3,000 people were attending the conference, hosted by. Yuwere Museveni, president of Uganda at the time, and still is today, um, where, you know, there was a senator from a country called West Bermuda or something like that. Yeah. You know, and he made a speech and said that we should be proudly Nigerian worldwide. Now, I looked at him, he's not a Nigerian, or maybe or maybe by slave, uh, whatever he, he was, he, was calling himself a Nigerian no, but no he said they were having a 24 hour channel on their TV for n- Nigerian movies mm. so somebody now quickly corrected him no 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 it has to be African music he said no if Nigerian movies make 90% of African music so how mm. can it be African music then mm. uh, I think I'm not so sure now whether that president himself and he quickly said Nigeria is part of Africa, so <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever Nigeria does, Africa right. is doing it. Right. So it made my head swell that day. I felt good, you know. But then I also noticed that we were not making enough money from it. Mm-hmm. And yet the world was making money from us. Mm-hmm. Jamaica was also making so much money from Nigeria, mm-hmm. Nigerian and African movies. Right. When did it now strike you? And I mean you collectively now. Right. That the business of movie making has to be taken more seriously. I think it must have been um, sometime around 2004. I think when we came back from that American trip, it, we began to understand that uh, it was we were, if we were playing before, we need to start making money. Hmm. Um, before it was all, you know, the the bohemian or the bohemian. Um, Templates of an artist, basically, so in, in Nigeria, they was all that you just make the money, have the fame, have fun, just be recognized and they wave to the fans, and that's all. But when it became very important and imperative that we had to take this thing serious, was 2004, and it was a it was a gradual thing. I would like to also thank uh, the likes of Africa Magic uh, DSTV that came in and mm-hmm. sort of opened you know the borders to you mm-hmm. know to to, to, to to us you know beyond our our, our local market here because mm. when producers began to realize that hey we can make money from this and we need money to stay sort of um, the unions became stronger the guilds became stronger mm. um, but basically the business template of it we had a few a couple of um, financial institutions that also came from that time to begin to say okay let us understand this business let us understand this industry i don't think we they understood it up till now enough but just that little um, push, just that little inquiry was enough for people to begin to rediscover and re-engineer 
what they felt the potentials of their own businesses were in the in the, in the movie industry. Mm. Uh, I also would think too that um, whatever, depending on whatever people think that the the push, the um, embrace of uh, the government, uh, good luck in the government to sort yeah. of uh, elevated the the both the 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 psyche of the players in the industry and the financial possibilities because it opened the eyes of the corporate world that you know if the if the president of the country is uh, so chummy and so friendly with the entertainers then there was something that they could do to also help the, the entertainment industry so the business itself in the last um should i say in the last seven years or eight years has grown full circle it's now more of a big business now more of a business than than play so i would say like uh, around 2011, 2012, when um, data, when we started collecting the right data, we started collecting the, we started having uh, more of the box office um, numbers. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was VHS, VCDs, DVDs, and all that. <laughs> the era of VHS. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, was, and the marketer could sell for you and say you sold only 10,000 copies. Meanwhile, you had pirated a million copies and all that. So there was oh no repeat. God strong uh, auditable uh, data that was from by the time the cinemas came and they started streamlining box office numbers and people begin to began to say that oh a film can make 50 million 30 million 100 million from the box office i think um, the 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 business itself the business minds of the producers themselves because producers the problem with producers mm. um, we are mostly creative mm. and we are not we are not really on the business end, but I think that has changed. What I've always told a lot of young producers is that you may be a creative producer in the quote, but you can get yourself um, an, uh, an, or, um, an accountant or a financial person to be within yeah. your organization that can also help you to grow your business. So, um, I do, are we making money now? I think if you ask me, it's going to be what my answer will be controversial. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, feel free, feel free. <laughs> I like that. I would say we have poorer producers now than before. That's a very uh, pregnant so statement. Poorer <laughs> producers <laughs> now than before. Hmm. Uh, Why would you say so? So if I if I would go back to um, the early two thousands and all the one we used to say, at least a producer could you could say a producer could do about five ten movies in a year. Mm-hmm. Um, and would release those movies and would see the flow. The of course, whether the marketers would keep them or not in terms of uh, sales, but it was there was always something money coming in, and they could you know they could still go back and shoot their movies because uh, well maybe the, the technical dictator that at that time to um, shooting on um, digital video was not really much like now, but. Uh, there was money you could see and can, but now a producer would have to shoot if he wants to shoot he will shoot and wait for like two years before he releases that film maybe a year mm. it will take eight months or so so the waiting period how does that producer survive and mm. there's no guarantee that when you put that film out on this, at the cinema that you're going to have a, a, a blockbuster so most of the time the lifespan of a producer within the business right now is uh, is shorter financially shorter Except he's got other things that he's doing I mean, because the the way things have changed, the rapidity of going on sex like mm. before has changed. You can't do that. You can't do that. So I think most producers are sort of living for the red carpet, <laughs> uh, living for the hype. <laughs> so <laughs> we, the, the <laughs> the, 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 then then there's 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 the fear of the unknown, the citizen. Yeah. It's also the belief that because of that fear, nobody's going to bother, so I'm not going to try anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, right. But but that happens in Hollywood too. Mm. It does. I mean, there are so many filmmakers, you know, from history that yeah. struggled years before they could even make one break. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Because okay. I, Arinze is not here, but let me, I'll, I'll quickly, yeah, let, please go ahead so I can, before I answer that question, go ahead. Yes, yeah. so I think that aspect of it is what I'll call the, uh, it's a phrase, that the phrase I use, the one that people waiting for the big break. I think there's a phrase I use, I say people, are, people usually will wait for God to peek through their windows. <laughs> <You know? laughs> 
<laughs> it, it has to the creative industry a lot. So mm, um, yeah, uh, you can see somebody. With, so most of the time, I, all of, through the years, I have traveled, you know, to most uh, countries in the world, especially in the Western countries, America. I see a lot of filmmakers, even fresh out of school or fresh out of film schools, or even in Hollywood themselves. Yes, Los Angeles. And a whole lot of them, you talk to them, they've not. Sh- you see them from in their thirties, forties, sixties. He's a director or assistant director, but he has not shot one film. And he say, "I'm." You see, they're still shooting the films they want to shoot in their head. Mm. So what they? It's like a, a man trying to write a book all his life. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what they would tell us back in the when I was they say, "You guys in Hollywood, you know, you guys are something else because." You think it and you go and do it immediately. You yeah. know, so I mean that was we have that we had sort of democratized in the, if I use that phrase in, in quotes, the essence of filmmaking. We started a guerrilla movement of filmmaking that said, Hey, we can we are not shooting on sixteen MM, we're not shooting on any of those uh, high polluting stuff back in the day. We are shooting on our digital videos and we are shooting for our market, our audience. We know our our audience, we know what they want and we push it out to them. Um, but over the years the guys will say, okay, we're so complete on the world stage. What are they using in Hollywood? Ari cameras. So we have a whole lot of uh, production um, uh, equipment right now that matches up to what they use in, in, in Hollywood. But yeah. what we, where we have not been able to um, get that nexus would be the um, commercial returns, like I said. Mm. That cinemas and, and a lot of producers waiting for their films to come out. Then Netflix itself, the OTT, that's the over-the-top um, yeah. SVOD. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are all coming, Amazon Prime and Netflix and all that. But they, are, they also have their own te- uh, templates. They have their own technical requirements, which producers are beginning to understand now so that you should to get on Netflix. So you, you must meet a certain minimum standard, yes. right? Absolutely. Yes. So that okay. is true as well. Yeah. Okay. Now... Think about piracy. I'm coming to that later. There was something you said earlier when I asked the question from uh, Kampala. <coughs> you, I see you said we'll come to that later as well. Right. Now, okay. let's look at acting, the talent. Right. Nollywood has created, you know, job for almost everyone. The good, the bad, the ugly, the, the educated, the uneducated. The talented, the not so talented, everybody. They, in fact, this is one industry that everyone has been given a chance to exhale. Yes. So, what would you now say? You've played the role of all of them. You've been both uh, an actor, producer, right. director, owner, everything. <laughs> so, <laughs> in fact, and of course, the historian of of the film industry. So, what would you say? Uh, has been the Midas touch for the average actor, and why? Ha- why? Why has now? Why has it become actor for male and female genders? <clears throat> okay. Um, let me. I'll answer the last one first. Um, okay. So the, I think that movement started in the, in the last twenty years or so. When you said actor to be actor, it shouldn't be actress and actor and. Um, any, any any term you use actor or, or actress but you can use actor as it's, it's, a, it's a profession mm. like have a doctor you cannot have doctor and doctress so you know and all that so well you uh, have prince and princess mm. <laughs> 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 well if you want to go into that we'll start bringing a little bit of the the left or the feminist movement into all that <laughs> I, I think i think i would like to to my uh, want to play safe no problem <laughs> and a male a, a male um, creative is an actor a female creative is, a, is an actress that's how i usually do it but exactly it, uh, if you want to be politically correct you say an actor um that, <laughs> that but in terms of the other first question we remember the the um mainstay of the actors right mm. um i i in, in um giving lectures sometimes and, and teaching um, you know, new actors. I always make examples that I said you only will succeed if you go out, go against the grain. If you stand out, mm-hmm. you are different. So you could have um, your mentors, you could have those that you look up to, you could have the RMGs or Jack Nicholsons, or you have uh, Al Pacino that you're meant to, you have um, uh, you came always and all that. But if you want to imitate them, then you just 
be like every other person. You'd be like them. You just be like this. There's nothing new. But if you take bits of their talent, that's why I keep so I have on what they call eclecticism. Mm. You know, eclecticism, yes, be eclectic. Um, so that means but, the ability to be able to do take different, yes, yeah, so okay. from here, borrow from here, from here, turn it into a hole for your own style and create right. your own. So. It's like uh, putting the condiments in a, of a stew or a soup, you know, in the kitchen and you're adding everything to make a delicious meal. Uh -huh. So you take what makes this person unique and take from it, take from it, then you add it, then what's the spine of your own acting, your own uh, talent, then you put it, then you, it comes out. I, I think talent, talent and more talent will rule the day. Mm. In the, going from now, on um, if people will own because now um, um, movies and televisions they are now spread to us in the in, the, in our living rooms uh, through Netflix through our mobile devices and all that so people are watching TV yes. is close up medium so people are going to be watching how you act and how you react whatever it is the nuances and all that so mm -hmm. it's not a child's play anymore so it's Enough. those who have something to offer in a very unique unique uh, uh, way that was that was standard so our actors with yes they are rich but not as rich as they should be mm. that way um i've had a few actors who say hey the reason why i'm doing so many movies is because man i got i got to feed i have a lot of <laughs> i got a lot of mouth <laughs> to feed so i'm accepting all the roles because i got to survive which is all well and good but that by itself too is killing the art i feel mm. so killing the art of the actor um but there are those who also want to be the true artist they'll say i'll do only one or two movies in a year and wait for the right role to come. Mm. It tends to pay off in the long run, but I will, in this industry, I always tell people to try and look for small alternative sources of income while you are doing that too as well. Um, it's, it's good to, to invest basically in other things that will also yield money that can take care of a little bit of the monthly bills and all that while the acting also. But it's not a, it's not a, we are not. We have not gotten to the point where we have actors commanding um, hundreds of millions or tens of millions for <laughs> appearances in movies. We've not gotten there. We will get there probably for the next generation. We will get there or when the right structures of investments are, are put in place in terms of. But right now we're not getting there. But otherwise, what I always say, I use the pigeon pigeon phrase. I, I always use. I say, you know, village not far. If you, if you don't plan, you don't plan your worker. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't plan your worker, or if you plan your worker, <laughs> if you plan your worker, you don't enter city now. You don't enter. <laughs> you don't enter <laughs> okay. All right. Now that's that's actually a smart way to look at the way you've done it now. Now let's. I want to call certain names, not by any order of their priority or importance, but the fact that. In a way, they have played their roles in their lives and in the industry. Mm. And Pete Edoche, right. who apparently has now created, you know, uh, uh, should I now say, generations of actors. Right. And maybe also movie makers. Then you also have, um, oh, wow. Okay. Ernest Obi, that I always, I was, I've been waiting for him to play the role of Mandela because he looks so much like Mandela. He's like Mandela, yeah, on the you know? first side, yeah. And strangely <laughs> enough, no Nigeria never thought of making that movie except Sonny Rabo, but anyway, maybe my time will come <laughs> <laughs> when I'm my nice. <laughs> then, Lancelot Oduwa in Maswain. Then you have, uh, you know, I'm, as I said, no other priority. I'm just speaking some of these names. Yeah. Because I have seen a deliberate effort to keep the fire burning then on the fe feminine side Genevieve Naji Uche Jumbo uh, well even more recent ones like uh, Mona Lisa now Cody mm. okay so I Z yeah. then there's a very another person that is almost like you is Zik Zulu Okafo yeah. now, I, I'm calling all these names because I f sometimes I feel their passion, I feel their style, but I also just look at them generally alongside. Then, mm. As I've called those names, I would like you to mention what you think is the role of a Mecca Mba Allah through the DSTV angle with mm. Africa Magic. So I've asked three 
different questions all rolled into one. Sorry, you. <laughs> yes, I'll, I'll, I'll answer them. Um, I think um, for those names you mentioned, um, yeah. Duke, who's uh, more or less like an icon, iconic. iconic. I I would have added um, Richard before that meet you. Yeah, right. Richard. Oh, sorry. That one, his <laughs> name was the first yeah. there. And yet, in fact, Richard to me is like, who would that be now? Is he yeah. the Malo, Malon Brando of, of Malon those days? Brando back in the air. Yes. Yes. You know, yeah. The style of acting because yes. these things you mentioned. Yeah. Genevieve, Peter Dolce, Richard, and Nesto Bill. And, um, in terms of their artistry, their visual artistry, in terms of mm. their, you know, what we see on the, on the screen, mm. they, are, they are iconic. They have brought their own style. And what I said earlier, that an actor has to find, you have to define your style. You can be eclectic, but everybody would know you for your style. Like I'm, I'm about to, uh, I'm finishing, I'm rounding up a book, you know, one, of my, one book, I'm, it's called um, Acting Styles in Nollywood. A peculiar Please case. remember me in paradise. A of peculiar histrionics, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, and these actors are all uh, mentioned in, in their own style. You know, Peter Doche, in, in, apart from his uh, breakout uh, role in uh, Things Fall Apart in 1986, yes, NCA production, mm -hmm. uh, he etched himself into the fame, all of fame in, in our cultural history. I swear, mm. it's through Nollywood. So, um, and it's a bit too through his work as a, both as an actor and a director. Lancelot has um, sort of stamped his own footprint in the annals of our, our you know, uh, directorial uh, halls of fame too as well because he's a, a very good director. Mm -hmm. So all of these people, um, they, they, they have something from what I'll call, and I don't like to use this dichotomy, but I, I would like to use it because it's an error. I won't, okay, I won't use that. I was going to say old Nollywood, but they have something <laughs> from an era, yeah. an era of Nollywood that is still very powerful to now. So that if you put any of these names you mentioned in any of the new movies right now, yes. going to Netflix or going anywhere, those because of the presence of those people in those movies, those movies have a better chance to travel and win audiences across the world than um, what, you're, what you're doing with the newer actors. Mm. That's mm. Because those people have stone, sweat, tears, and blood for this. But there's a passion inherent in this, a very strong passion. We built the industry on passion. Like I said, at that time, we were doing it for the home. So let's just do it. I, let's, let's, so that passion is still there. It's sort of, uh, it, 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 it's still, I think people are, are reaping from the reward, you know, of that passion back, you know, back in the day. Mm. So. I think we we we've got that coming to a maker and bar. Mm -hmm. uh, what format the, the, the general of the NDC and uh, yes, the of the a national uh, film uh, censors board. Yes, board, yes. Census board, yes. Um, I don't think a lot of people also understand and know his role in the industry. Sorry, um, I, I, let me just tell you something. Can I make? Right. Shagun Arunze is trying to get me on the phone. <laughs> I'm just going to say, Shagun, please come to the studio wherever you are. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay, okay, all right. We, we, we put it shows that it ends at two, three o'clock. So we'll leave you for next week Sunday then. Charles is blowing grammar here. Serious issues, man. You are missing. Oh yeah, come, come. You you joining? Okay, fantastic. See you soon. Is it next week, eh? Okay, good. All right. Thanks. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So, Sorry, uh, that was Charles. Um, I said Charles. Shagun yeah. Rinse said he had a, 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 a bit of emergency with his wife and blah blah blah. So, right. yeah. Okay. So we're talking about Emeka Umba. Yes. And uh, most people do not know that Emeka Umba is. I think so, uh, first of all, is a very cerebral, intelligent. Very uh, intelligent guy. And, yes. Uh, you know, it's sort of unassuming when you see him. You don't know that there's behind that one of the sharpest brains that are not even just in the industry, but mm. I mean. Uh, you know, just an intellectual. Mm -hmm. um, but he, he, he thinks as as uh, a, a content uh, curator with DSTV back mm -hmm. in the in the, yes. early, in the, in the nineties. Yes. Um, sort of uh, made him understand to the essence of uh, putting together a channel uh, yes. for the for DSTV. That he was the one who actually suggested one of those who pushed that uh, channel like DSTV 
based on the Nigerian movie should uh, should come on on their platform. And, 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 and they got happy. five channels. <laughs> <laughs> they got factor now because the popularity if i give a brief history of african magic i think in 2003 uh-huh. uh, i was in my office and i got a call and then uh there's a lady who called me and said she did, her name was hamida Suleiman. hamida Suleiman, yes i sat <laughs> yes i was yes. I, I midwifed the the battle between her group uh, the, that's dstv and uh and the association of movie producers nigeria when mbc dg appointed me and the amaka igwe to I see that oh my god <laughs> <laughs> i remember well, she came to my office then and said they were starting a channel i felt that was very novel and i said oh yeah they said yeah mm-hmm. they were starting a channel because nigerian movies look like they're traveling so they want to put a channel but but the thing to then was that it was only going to be shown in nigeria and ghana not in south africa before they knew it the whole country yeah, <laughs> the whole it, continent just, you know, it was not going to be yeah popular and all that but when they came up in december 2003 that's when african magic started and uh, mm. i think within three months or four months when they saw the reception of how it was heavy on the rating <laughs> they had to open it up to the other african countries and and, uh, and that's how it blew you know before from african magic one because it was so huge the, the content was so coming in streaming in plenty that they had to open african magic two and now we have about not even five it's about seven african uh, channels you know basically then you have it it, it sort of uh, dovetailed into maisha the maisha the i think maisha magic and so each region actually have their own right now wow. as well. wow. but that is basically good advice from emeka on his own um, um, um advice to the industry uh, to the dsp that they should have I've, this I've, I feel yeah. pained. Why I brought Emeka Mba into this matter? I feel pained by, because with people like that and like you, you know, I would have expected that the entire country gained maximally from it. Mm. You know, but what I have seen is this struggle for the Nollywood industry to survive, the struggle mm. for the music industry to survive, the struggle mm. for entertainment generally to have a mainstay when they, this, this segment, mm of yes. money making of the revenue generation can beat oil hands down yes. tourism is another thing culture and tourism yes. so I why is nigeria so blessed and yet so denied i think we we'll have to equate that with uh, we we'll have to leave that with, for the leadership we have had a problem over the years i think there's also we've changed the perception um, um, um indices of what the how the industry should be i think we've done that very well in the last 20 years that this is not this industry is not a joke by the time you look at the gdp figures nollywood accounts for, for about uh, one point something percent or about two over two almost three percent of the total gdp the entertainment industry itself mm-hmm. and that is small but so a serious um, thinking um government or you know uh, people who, who plan policies and all that would have actually have sat down to say how do we maximize this industry, uh, maximize this and yeah. make, make the gdp even 10 percent in the next five years and all that from this from this industry but nobody is everybody's thinking it's all only oil and trade and i think that doesn't work that way mm. and it's the, the 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 sad part of it too like you said is that um, um people are still struggling but i know the positive side of it too is that the music industry has got has grown in lift more in lift in the past mm-hmm. five years mm-hmm. or eight years Mm-hmm. Uh, you know before it was playing catch up to nollywood but now it's, it's gone global and that's because the music the musicians the artists themselves and the, those involved in the business decided to take their their, their destinies in their own hands mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. before it used to be pirates the alaba pirates used to pirate the musicians now they cut <laughs> that one off so now nobody is doing anything about pirates. nobody is even talking the musicians go straight on the stream they are you know they are up on the platform they're streaming mm-hmm. and all that of course, nobody is even bothered about whether they are buying CDs or what. I don't think CDs are even. I think CDs are open. <laughs> CDs and DVDs, they've all gone awry <laughs> completely. Yeah, yeah. So they cut that off and um, began entering, I mean, having agreements with the Universal Music, Warner Brothers, and all that. You know, some of these big artists, they are all signed up. They have deals with all these big labels all mm. over the world. So there is, especially with the Black Lives Movement of last year, of the past three years or thereabouts. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and the and the and then you know the the africa um going back to the root movement yes there's a lot of attention coming back to africa for to, to harness the talent to harness the creativity and all that so are we ready here on our own part we are in terms of the talent but in terms of the structure 
to meet with the foreign expectations, we still are struggling with that. And this mm. is where government comes. I'll give an example. In our film industry, we should have gone bigger, but we don't even have a film uh, treaty. We don't have a film commission that would ratify some of the treaties mm. you know, that are that are needed for us to have co-production with foreign um, countries. Mm. Mm. That is something that we've been advocating for for a year. So that the law has not been ratified for that effect. We're supposed to have a whole. There are a whole lot of things that are left in the limbo right now, and that puts us as a, as a disadvantage. Okay. So the industry itself. Yes. So when we're talking about, you mentioned those names, Peter Dochin, Aaron, all of us. We have done. We, have, we could say we're uh, sort of pioneers of first generation of Nollywood that is here. Yeah. So. What is the legacy? I think right now we are in the legacy period of our life. Here we are trying to say, okay, let's put things right. Let's try and mm-hmm. leave something to that for the next generation to follow. If the next generation do, do not sort of build on what we feel that it can, can be built on, as it were, uh, then there will be a problem. But do we engage Do we engage more of the government? The government is not even looking at uh, you know they are not. I don't. Know, I don't know how to put it, but maybe it's the cost of, it's the cost of uh, aloofness. <laughs> mm. Mm. So it is, there's something very aloof about uh, entertainment to those in in in, in high places, mm. and um, that has to change. Okay. Now, um, I want to. In fact, I should have given room to call us about 13 minutes ago, but okay. the, the stuff you are coming out with is so powerful. And <laughs> please, I'm devoting. From now till the end of October to the entertainment industry and most of it was going to be Nollywood filmmaking and all that so please don't forget that I'm going to depend on you again sooner than later and Chegwan Rizzi is now agreed for next Sunday so let, let, let me ask this question my passion is not necessarily from just because Nigerians are talented Nigeria is a gifted nation. And anywhere there, even, even in Hollywood, there are Nigerians who are in Hollywood. Right. Making their names, making impact. Right. What is wrong with Nigerian collaborations? Because first, it was, the, the people say the movie industry was the Igbo, Igbo man industry. Mm. You know, that was the trend. Yes. Then there was also a battle with piracy. Alaba market where some people were just could be seen in fact charlie boy who is not even a movie person but he was more music than movies yes well it took a, a squad of people to go and fight piracy as far as Alabama market yes. i remember so, yes. but why why are you people in, the, in your industry you're not even making a conscious effort to fight it why piracy no. I think the I think people have um, they've been concerted effort to fight this. But um, what I would say in that regard is that there's always got to be a vanguard for, for every fight. So maybe it's bills that are really out in the front there they are doing um, the job in, where it is where it is needed for the industry to collectively come together. I don't think anybody will have a problem. But I do not think piracy. I do not think piracy in um, the physical form we, we, we knew it. I don't think it's uh, a problem as it used to be 10 years ago. Okay, then we'll that has piracy. diminished. So, yeah, okay. even the pirates now are poor. The pirates, the pirates, <laughs> <to> <laughs> I like that. Are poor. Yeah, because they were ripping from what they did not know. So nobody hardly has, uh, has um, uh, what do you call it, um, CD players or all those um, DVDs and all that. There's not really much as such. And then some of the films that are coming out, they are going straight from the cinema to Netflix. So you cannot also download stuff on uh, okay. on, on those uh, things like that unless you want to get. So I think the pirates themselves, they have understood that they. they the battle is lost. Producing, they started producing or uh, producing films and investing in the music so that they can put on YouTube and on streaming platforms for themselves to make money. Then there were lots of the manual as it were back then, but not not anymore. But mm. I, in, in terms of um, um, industry having a voice, one voice to fight, or coming together, well, there's, there's always been a problem because it's diverse. It's a diverse industry. We have the ones from Candywood, Yoruba, um, Wood, 
the yeah all the see that's uh, another thing you yeah. created more woods in within nigeria <laughs> when the u.s the u.s the owner of hollywood is hollywood worldwide so what is kind of wow we are not the only we are not the only wood in the africa in kenya there's the uganda they call themselves something the tanzania wood they are Tanzi wood they're just so they all the woods are all over the place so wood so like, like, you know, uganda I, would too. just be the locale <laughs> in the particular locale like, uh, but I think the industry coming together as one, um, we need a central body. That's why if anybody, ha uh, well, if people within the industry or two have heard of uh, an attempt to have one body called MOPICON, which is the Movie Traditional Council of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We've been asking for that since 2001. We've come, we've passed it. Uh, 20 years later. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah, thanks mm -hmm. to the National Assembly. And that's awaiting the uh, review. Yeah, and if we come and that's the same way, you know, Koson, uh, there was a battle. <laughs> Coson and all of this. We have uh, the personal scam. Yeah, yeah. We have one body that speaks for the industry, respective of tribe or region. That would make our fight uh, easier. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay, now, I, sorry guys, I know I didn't give you a chance to call. Please, the, the line is free. Just call. I, let me give uh, Mr. Novia a little chance to take in a breath and let, let me just take your questions. We still have about 15 minutes or less. Right. And it's 0700 923 923 923. I'll slow down. 0700 923 923 923. And then, of course, we have um, WhatsApp 0817 613. No, 313 6193. That's nollywood the nollywood movie industry is a very powerful phenomena in africa and it started from nigeria and it's spreading like wildfire and the lines are also calling so let me take the calls one by one hello good afternoon hello 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 Yes, good afternoon. Mr. Novia, please listen. Uh, good afternoon. Right. Yeah, yes, uh, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Go ahead. Yes. Uh, I do. I just joined the program right right now, so I had little of your discussion. It's the Hollywood industry, yes. Movie industry in Nigeria. Uh, okay, we are talking about movie, movie industry, but does that also allow us and the music industry to say one or two things? Yeah, because you create soundtrack for from Nigerian movies. Yes, what do you want to say that is relevant to movie industry? Okay. Oh boy, uh, your voice is suddenly gone cracky. Hello. Hello. Your voice is not very clear. Say it slowly and carefully. Go ahead. Okay. I have it. Okay, I'm sorry about that. We have to try another. Okay, so um, that is not very clear. And uh, let's, the line is free again. 0700-923-923-923. And please, sir, uh, you can call again. For the idea that it takes, please call again. And somebody said, good afternoon, Uncle Sonny Irabo. Okay, in my area, the radio station, I see. Please greetings to your guests can we know how the movie industry is making enough money for the country because i heard you say i heard you say you can make a lot of money even more than oil is that possible but mr novia your question well, your I answer earlier that, that it contributes about um three point something percent to the gdp right now to the uh, i mean if, uh, if i'm if i remember yeah. and that was i'm quoting about three four years ago the okay uh, um the data in the mbs report i think um i should just break it down in the layman's term yes the industry employs formally over three million people so by the time you're talking about people going on, we have about 2,000 films or 3,000 films that are recorded by mm -hmm. this government that comes out every year. Mm -hmm. Imagine each of those films they are spending the least amount that is spent on that film is about 10 million naira. So you calculate that that's something. We em each film um, employs about a hundred people at every point, ad hoc, mm -hmm. you know, formally. 
So you can imagine how many people have been employed in that. Then the hotels, the bars, the 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 um, the airlines, yes. the, the buses you take when you watch those films, those those things, those are part of the employment matrices that you have too as well. Um, okay. The industry is not generating what it should generate. We have only about uh, less than um, seventy square, uh, you know, about. Uh, 23 cinemas across the country, I think, about 33. Ah, that's a far cry, isn't it? Yeah. In India, you have about uh, 13,700 cinemas in India. They will, the but they will start to argue with you that India is 1.3 billion people. <laughs> so, 1.3 billion people, but every every local government or every area you go in India, there is a cinema. Okay. And when, the, when an Indian producer is releasing a movie, if you releasing a movie this week, in the next one week, he has made 500 million, whatever it is. And, you know, by the time he calculated to their, to their dollars, he must have made 10 million, 3 million, 4 million dollars. Mm. If we had that, if we had just only about 500 cinemas in Nigeria, mm. producers would have been making a lot of money. And then by the time he put that to what the, in the government would have made from taxes alone, that also would have helped. So it's a long pro it's, it's a long lecture you know basically you, you, you would read a little bit of the uh, um lake alda report if you google lake alda report on yes the, you see yes a little bit of that yes, yes. and people will get more information and on that too as well oh wow okay coming back to you team okay we have a caller hello hello yes Good afternoon. How are you? It's an absolute privilege to talk to you. Thank you. What's your name? My name is Benga. I'm calling you from Victoria. Yes, go ahead, please. It's a child. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Benga. So I just uh, wanted to say one or two things. Uh, first, yes. I want to agree with the child that Nolly uh, will have participated in terms of potential because it's more than the GDP that it currently is. But, um, I wanted to ask Mr. Chow that, that um, what efforts are being made basically for, because um, when you see Nollywood movies, uh, there seems to be a lot of concentration on known faces. You can watch two, three movies in a row on Africa Magic and Mr. Chow's of LB3 of them. Mm -hmm. so, so um, I just wanted to ask now what concerted efforts are being made to, you know, create room for the up and coming you know, to give them opportunities. Uh, you know, like there's a Washington now would have maybe a movie or two in three, two years, as opposed to the way we find it in Hollywood. And by extension, it's affecting the opportunities that the up and coming will have. So I just want to ask, what efforts okay. have been made, you know, to create that opportunity for the up and coming, you know, with movie production and uh, the entire value chain. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Well, that's that's, that's a very valid question, uh, mm. uh, Benga. So if I answer that, I think, first of all, um, the, the fault would not be much on the producers, but on the audience. So sometimes the audience will say they want to see these faces in the movie. So producers who want to put as many stars as possible, the same faces in the movie. But what the problem is, is that those stars, what are they really playing in the movies? It was the, mm -hmm. how do they break their acting and their talent as well? Now, there are so many new actors out there. So that's why, thankfully, that the television industry is growing. So now, so it's TV movies have been, people have been more made for TV movies and all that. So everywhere in the world, stars back in the day used to go from TV to film. That was how it used to be. So it's from television, you see the television stars were going to film. But now, basically, we are seeing people doing films and then going to TV. But it's fine, the world has changed. I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, it's um, I personally most of my films back in you know when I've done films I usually introduce stars so I I don't want to post about stars I've introduced but there's no time for that one but, but I have a, a developmental process for young people to also come out and you know fill in the void okay so this, the industry itself yes we get new stars but we let, need let me quickly so take this let me quickly take this yeah. caller hello right. good, yeah. good afternoon good afternoon sorry I'm, for keeping I'm, you waiting yeah. yeah, this is Obi. I'm feeling. Okay. Um, in my own personal opinion, I don't think our indigenous movies are 
giving us premium quality across board. The acting, the soundtracking, everything, the picture. Yeah. Look at our music. Nigerian music, at least as far as, uh, as much as I know, if you go to foreign countries, the West, go to UK, go to places in the US, you'll be listening to Nigerian music too far. And there's even the white people that are listening to them. You can see all foreign artists, white, black foreign artists, Americans, Europeans, they are all doing collabs, they are all enjoying and they're interacting with our local musicians. I mean, look at Whiskey the other day. Yes, you, are, you, have to, you have to run off now because he needs and time to answer your question. So all I can say is, yeah, yeah. Really should, I don't know, try and improve on their professionalism. Okay, thank you so much. Mr. Novia. Yeah, I don't I don't think uh, people should have outrightly blame knowledge. This is a an industry that started from its own belief system. So we put mm. our money where our mouth is like I want to fit a movie now, I have to go and raise fifty million, sixty million, a hundred million to fit a movie. Mm. Who gives me that? Nobody gives me the bank don't give me anything. So the what you see, the quality you see is a function of budget. Mm. The budget also is a function of how viable the industry is in the financial circles too as well. I just talked about about cinemas, we need more cinemas. I just talked about things that we have to do. We are still a long way off, and um, so don't really say our our things that don't have quality. They have quality. Dave Chappelle the other day says he wants to do a Nollywood movie that he would like to act and sponsor a Nollywood movie. Tyler Perry has also said that the few people have also said that that hey, you know, yeah. you know, we've seen a lot of these things. We want to we'll be part of this. So it's opening up. It's, Nollywood had traveled before the music industry. It had traveled out there in the world before the music industry sort of. Um, Took, took over right now but i think mm. we'll have a, a, a nexus between both very soon thank you so much mr novia in fact i'm going to call you again and the, the, as i said to you the whole of october is devoted to nollywood and the entertainment industry that's nollywood music entertainment industry theater and all of that so you've really broken the ice and i want to thank you profusely for not just giving us your time but giving us your brain, your grey matter. You know, they Very said, much. when you want to deal with an authority in Nollywood industry, just hook on to a Charles Novia, you know, a Zulu Okafor. So I'm going to pick all of you one by one. <laughs> Even the ROMOD, who did his sixth year recently, we're going to pick on him. So thank you so much, Charles Novia. And Shegun Arinze is next week. And I'm hoping that all of you will just make yourselves available and we'll continue to talk to you. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. Thank Have a you. great, great, great day. Bye yes. bye now. Right. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's been Charles Novia on Sony Rabo Live uh, talking about the evolution, if you like, that's my paraphrasing now, of the Nollywood industry. Next week, we'll continue with Shebun Arize. Okay? Bye bye now. Thank you all. <laughs>